It is another awesome day to come before the Lord. Amen. To share the word of the Lord, the words of life. Amen. My name is Reverend Kinsley and this is man of eternity. We are going to study the word of God. We are going to learn from the Spirit and receive the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We started a series um, this week. We talked about, in our previous video, we talked about walking in the Spirit, how to walk in the Spirit. Amen. And we said that that was the first video. Today, we would like to do a second video on the same topic. Amen. And by God's grace, finish this topic. We cannot actually finish the teachings of walking in the Spirit. Amen. But I believe that this teaching will just give you a foundation. It will just set you, set you up or uh, get you started on the right path in walking in the Spirit. Amen. So the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, amen. Thank you for always watching our videos and thank you for being part of this program. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you and we give you praise. We are about to study your word. We ask that grant us understanding, open our minds, open our hearts, receive your word in spirit and in power in Jesus' name, amen. So um, it's the same topic we are treating, how to walk in the spirit. But I've entitled today's message, understanding walking in the spirit understanding walking in the spirit amen now a lot of christians think we know what walking the spirit is even pastors even know what they think they know what walking the spirit is but when you study scripture you realize that walking the spirit is much more deeper than what we think it is amen now when 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 you meet a christian and you ask a christian how do you walk in the spirit they will say by praying reading the Bible, and also do not commit sin. Amen. In fact, most Christians think that to walk in the Spirit is to not commit sin. Amen. But you see, when you study the Scripture, you realize that walking in the Spirit is more than not committing sin. Amen. Because why? You see, we have people who believe or they are part of other religions who do not also commit sin. Amen. We have people who are part of other groups. Uh, we have support groups that they teach people how to not become drunkards, amen. They train people on how not to become addicted to certain drugs, amen. So we have people that they, by the reason of their own self will and strength, they've learned how not to commit fornication, let discipline themselves on how not to uh, drink alcohol, how not to uh, live certain ungodly lifestyle, amen. But you see, that does not mean that they are walking in the spirit. Amen. So we need to understand what walking in the spirit is and what it is not. Amen. Then it will give us a clear understanding on how to walk in the spirit. Amen. Now I'll take my first scripture from Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Not laying, let us go on to what perfection. Now, the word of perfection there means also maturity. Amen. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. He says that let us leave the basic principles. And what are the basic principles? He went on to list many of them, but I'll talk about the first two. He said, leaving, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. I mean, you see, when you come into the faith of Christ, there are two things you must know. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. These two things are the foundations of walking in the Spirit. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Now, let's look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verses number one, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, has pertained to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he were off to glory, but not before God. Amen. For what the scripture said, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted for him for righteousness. Bible says that let us not lay the foundation of repentance from dead works. That means we should leave the foundation of the repentance of dead works and have faith towards God. Now here, the scripture is saying that if Abraham became righteous by his own work, then he can boast before God. He can boast, but not before God. If Abraham became righteous by his own works, then he can boast, but not before God. 
But what is the scripture saying? The scripture is saying that Abraham believed and faith was given to him. Amen. Now verse 4. Now to him that works is the reward not to reckon of grace but of debt. Now listen. The Bible is saying that whatever you receive by your own works, it is not grace. It is works. Amen. Or it is wages. It is something you are being paid for. Amen. So now, this is where walking in the Spirit must come in. Now, when we say to walk in the Spirit, means that to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost, to obey God. Not to depend on your strength. Amen. I'll go deeper. But basically, to walk in the Spirit is to depend on the power of the Spirit and to depend on what Jesus Christ did on the cross to obey God. Not to depend on your own strength. So, for example, if you are tempted, amen, in any sin, and you, by your own strong will or your own strength, you decide that, no, I will not do this. I will not uh, um, indulge myself in this sinful act, amen. And at the end of the day, you, are not, you do not indulge yourself in that sin or that act, and you, you avoid that sin. Now, man will look at you and say you have walked in the spirit. But God has a different opinion on that matter. Now, if that same sin comes to you and you say, Lord Jesus Christ, you died for me on the cross and delivered me from sin. And by your grace and your strength and because of the Holy Spirit, I am righteous now. Now, therefore, because of your righteousness, I resist the sin. Now, if you resist sin because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ in you, because of the righteousness you have received from Jesus Christ, because you believe that he died and delivered from sin, if you resist this sin, sorry, if you resist sin by depending on the death of Jesus Christ as your strength and your power, you have walked in the spirit. But if you resist sin by your own natural strength, and we, you are walking the flesh. Amen. Let's look at something in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. I love this verse very much. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Now, the Bible says that the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. That means when a man is doing something, he sees it to be pure and clean. But the Lord weighs the spirit. That means that when a man does something, amen, and God comes in to judge the matter, God does not judge the work of man based on the results. He judges the work of man based on the spirits he used to do that work. Amen. It is the spirit you use to do that work is what matters before God. So if you resist sin by your own strength, it is walking in the flesh because you are trying to attain righteousness by your own strength and God rejects that. But if you resist sin by, the, by, by your faith in Jesus Christ, that because Jesus Christ died for you and resulted on a third day and because of his death and resurrection, you are now righteous. If you resist sin with this mindset and with this understanding that I am resisting sin because Jesus Christ died for me and delivered me from sin. You have walked in the spirit. Amen. Now, the book of Galatians is written to address this issue. Amen. Now, the people of Galatians were... Galatia, Gal Galatia was not in Israel. Amen. Now, when they got born again, what happened was that the Jewish community in that city came around telling the Christians that you are not saved or you are not righteous unless you circumcise. So the, the, it went on for a very long time to the extent that now the Christians who had received Jesus Christ and had become born again in the city of Galicia were going about to circumcise himself to become righteous. And Paul had to come in to address this issue. This issue. Now verse chapter number 3, Galatians chapter number 3, Amen. Oh, foolish Galatians, that you see, when he was at it, he was so aggressive on it that remember, Paul himself was an Hebrew, a Pharisee, a trained person, a trained Pharisee of the law of Moses. So he understands what it means to circumcise. But here is Paul preaching against that. 
that your righteousness is not based on your circumcision, which means that your righteousness is not based on what you do. It is based on what Jesus Christ did. So Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, O foolish Galatians who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you, this only I will learn of you, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith. He said, you foolish Galatians, were you not the same who has bewitched you or who has cast a spell upon you that you are moving from the truth and you are now accepting something different? Were you not the same people that I came to preach that Jesus Christ has died for you? Then he said, this I want to know from you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? By what you did, or you received the Holy Spirit because you heard the gospel and believed? That's a question he's asking. And obviously, no one received the Holy Spirit because of what he did. Everyone received the Holy Spirit because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, he went on to talk about many things. Then he got to chapter 5. Amen. He got to chapter 5. He said, verse 1, Stand, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now he said, stand on what Jesus Christ has done for you, and do not go about trying to do something to receive righteousness. Do not go about trying to do something by your own strength to become spiritual. Amen. Now, let me fast and pray very hard. When I fast and pray very hard, I'll become very great in the spirit, and God will now give me some power. Then another person also comes in and says, I am going to fast and pray very hard because Christ has died for me. And because of the death of Jesus Christ, I am only righteous and holy. Therefore, because I'm only righteous and holy by my faith in Jesus Christ, I will fast and pray to become more sensitive to the spirit. Both of these people, the one who fasts because of his faith in Jesus Christ, is the one whose fast is worthy before God. But the one who fasts, having this mindset that when I fast, then God will see my fast and do something for me. That person has walked in the flesh. You see, you can never do anything for God to accept you. That is the reason why Jesus came in. So after Jesus has come in, you don't go back and say that, now that you are born again, I still have to do my own thing and trust in what I am doing to be accepted by God. When you do that, when you are walking in the flesh, you are not walking in the spirit. Amen. So let's continue. Galatians 5, verse 2. Behold, I call I say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you not. In their case, it was circumcision. In your case, it is a mentality that you think that you have to do something for God to accept you. No. Galatians chapter number three galatians chapter number three verse 11 but that no man is justified by god no man is justified by the law in the sight of god no one let me let me read another verse first corinthians chapter number one first corinthians chapter number one verses number 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence no flesh should glory in his presence verse 30 first corinthians chapter 1 verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence verse 30 but of him are ye in christ who of god is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption now the bible says that you cannot stand before god and glory or boast that i became righteous by my fasting i got this anointing by my fasting i because i know how to pray that's why god gave me this thing no you cannot do that because that and he went on verse 30 and said that God has made Jesus Christ to become our righteousness, our sanctification, our redemption, that is deliverance, and our wisdom. So it is because of Jesus Christ you are who you are. So by the rest of what Christ has done for you, you resist sin and walk in holiness and righteousness, not to become holy. You see, do not think that if you stop sinning, then you become holy. When you do that, you are walking in the flesh. Rather, this is how you should walk before God, that because of the death of Jesus Christ, I have been delivered from sin. Therefore, because I have been delivered from sin, I live a holy and righteous life. So you do not depend on what you are doing to be accepted by God. No, you depend on what Christ has done to be accepted by God. When you depend on what Christ has done, then every other thing you do, your fasting, your prayer, your giving, your, your reading of the scriptures or whatever you do, it now becomes also accepted by God. But if you think that what you do is what will make you accepted by God, you will be rejected by God. Amen. 
So to walk in the spirit is to believe what Christ has done for you and accept what Christ has done for you. And based on that, you also begin to obey God. Let me show you something, okay? In the book of Romans. Book of Romans. Book of Romans, chapter number. Um, book of Romans, chapter number 19 says, For as many as for us by one man's disobedience were many made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So it is Christ's obedience that made you righteous, that made you spiritual, that made you blessed, that made you powerful, that made you anointed, that made you receive the Holy Ghost. It is Christ's obedience. It is not your obedience, it is Christ's obedience. Now, after obedience, after believing in what Christ has done for you, after accepting the obedience of Christ to become righteous, you now fulfill your own obedience. And but when you are fulfilling your own obedience by staying away from sin, by praying, by reading the scripture, by evangelizing, by giving tithes, by paying offering, when you are doing those things and fulfilling your obedience, remember that your obedience is only accepted because Jesus Christ obeyed on your behalf. It is not what you do that makes God accept you. It is what Christ did that made God accept you. And your faith in what Christ did, did, that makes God accept you. After God accepting you by your faith in Christ, then you also walk in your obedience by your faith in Christ. So you walk in obedience by still having faith in Christ. So I stop saying not to become righteous. Rather, I stop saying because I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm already righteous. Hallelujah. I'm trying to find so many ways of saying one thing in many ways that you will understand me. So to walk in the Spirit is to allow the power of God to operate through you. To walk in the Spirit is to live holy, live righteous by the power of the Holy Ghost, not by your strength. That's to walk in the Spirit. So you stop sin by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is your faith in Jesus Christ. You have to have this mindset that you are righteous and holy because of Jesus Christ, not because of what you do. So whether you are able to stop fornicating or not, you still believe that it is Jesus who has made you righteous. Whether you pray 10 hours or 2 hours or 50 hours, you still believe that it is because of Jesus Christ. That's why you are accepted by God, not your prayers. Whether you give offering or not, you must believe that it is because of Jesus Christ. That's why God is blessing you, not because of your offering. You are blessed because of Jesus Christ, not because of your offering. Your offering, your prayer, your fasting, everything you do, makes what you have already received in Christ become tangible in your life. It, you, it makes you receive them and enjoy them. But it does not make God force to give you something. God gives you something because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Have that in mind always. And your work with God will be very fruitful and be a blessing to you and others around you. Jesus is the reason you are who you are, not what you do. Always work with this mentality and you shall see the blessing of God. This is the end of my teaching. My name is Reverend Casey, this man of eternity. We are on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and we are on Facebook, follow our page. Hallelujah. Beloved, walk in the spirit by believing and having faith in what Christ has done for you and receive it. Don't depend on your works or what you do. Amen. We shall be we shall meet again, God willing. Stay blessed and the peace of God be with you. Amen.